Welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel, and uh, we'll talk about a little bit what uh, is a bias T, and uh, explain also a little change I did today on my setup. So bias T is something that you hear more and more today because of simply the fact that we are using devices and antennas that often need to be powered. So why do antennas need to be powered? That is dependent on the type of the antenna you're using. So most antennas are like, you know, a long wire or, you know, uh, a regular vertical or, you know, a G5RV or most of these are standalone antennas. They are actually kind of passive. They receive a signal. They resonate to whatever you're receiving and you get that signal into your radio and so the way that they actually work is by being resonant to the frequency you're listening to they kind of get the biggest amount of signal available for you to uh, you know to inject into your radio and then your radio of course amplifies all of this but there are other types of antennas that are antennas that need to be powered. They need to be powered powered because they have an amplifi amplification stage. They actually take that signal, but they amplify that signal before they send it back to your radio. So an example of that is the MLA-30 loop that I talk about a lot. That antenna has an amplifier on board. It's a low-noise amplifier. It requires a power to work. It's an electronic circuit. And to power it, well, we have something called bias T, which is kind of a way to split the power and the signal and all of that um, to make sure that you don't zap a radio. So in this case, for example, you see a biasing T. Uh, you, and the connectors you see at the top are to receiver to antenna. And why is it important that that be separated? Well, you might want to put power into the antenna for the amplifier, but you don't want to have power applied to your radio because you'll blow up the radio, or the, at least the radio's you know amplifier circuit at the uh, at the entry of the antenna connector. You don't want power to go there, and so bias T separates the power from what is the signal you're going to receive. So what goes to the antenna is the power. What goes to the receiver is this little bias T, separating the power, so removing that electricity, but keeping just the RF side of the signal. So this is something that for a regular radio you need to use. So if you buy an MLA-30, you will need to power this little box because that's what um, is going to power your portable receiver or your ICOM receiver or your um, you know, Kenwood receiver or so on. Because these radios are not made for um, you know, anything else than receive a signal at their antenna inputs. But Today I made a change because some of the receivers we buy today, so this one is the uh, SDR Play RSPDX. Of course, this has its own bias T. And that means that it can actually power your antenna and also split the signal in here without having to have a power inserter box like you've seen in the previous picture. So that's what I did today. Um, I removed the MLA-30 power, um, of course, bias T power inserter, and am using the SDR Play's bias T itself. So it works great using that. And of course, it means that there's less devices on my desk and, you know, things plugged in. Of course, I need to keep the MLA-30's power inserter because if I want to use the MLA-30 with a uh, portable receiver or with my ICOM ICR-D500 or my Yisu FT450, 
I need the power inserter to be, be to be actually put back because those radios can't power the antenna. So uh, that's pretty much what I've done. I've actually um, used BIOS-T from the RSPDX now. Um, in terms of noise, because I've seen some of you talk about how using the BIOS-T from the uh, device directly rather than the you know power adapter and the power inserter lowers noise. So I've been switching back and forth on some signals and looking at the signal to noise ratio. And um, what I will say is that I see absolutely no difference. What it probably means for me is that if you are using a good power adapter that doesn't induce noise, you probably don't see really much of a difference using the uh, internal bias T of the uh, device rather than the power inserter box. But that said, it just removes, you know, a device that you might not need if you don't have anything else. So if you have an SDR Play RSPDX, RSP1A, or RSP Duo, and so on, you don't, and you have nothing else, you, you just don't need that power inserter box anymore. Keep it handy because if you have another receiver someday, it might be needed. But um, I've seen, personally, I don't see any difference um, biasing T with the power supply and power inserter or directly from the RSPDX, but I have the advantage that there's less circuits and less things working on my desk when I use it with the RSPDX's uh, bias T, which is nice because it's switch switchable on and off from the uh, SDR Uno panel directly. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thanks for watching.